DonaldHumpkinsOfFrontStretch.com, and I'm standing next to the president of Colic Racing, Chris Rice. Chris, you're on the ground every single race when it comes to Colic Racing, and it just you just seem like you have so much emotion, so much energy behind this team. I'm just going to start off with, can you tell me about what it's like working with Colic Racing compared to your veteran career, and how much of a tight-knit community this team seems to be? Yeah, well, thank you for asking me that, and thanks for noticing that. Uh, you know, Matt Collick gave me an uh, opportunity years ago to build a race team, and he's let me build it like I would want to build it with his help and learning the business and different things like that. And when you do that, you just get to do the things you love. And I, I, I do what I love every day, but I, I really put it all into our people. Um, you know, Daytona didn't go that well leading up to the Xfinity cars getting here, and I could have done a lot of things, but what I do is just build my people up and uh, our people up and, and try to explain that it's just it's not about the moment, it's about the what's happening. You know, the activity will make results if we get our activity up. And it's just every day I wake up, I think about colleague racing and, and how can we make it better, what can we do, what kind of people we can get in to make it better. And you just want to be successful, right? Like that's the things you want to do. We spent – so many years not being successful that people don't even realize. Um, I remember the day, you know, we, we came with Blake Cook down here and we was just glad to get here. It was the first time we started and then we ended up finishing ninth. But then we went on a streak of finishing like 24th. So, you know, those days uh, make you stronger and make you better when you do get successful and you get good people around you. But we're just so fortunate to have Matt Collick allowing me as a racer to build a race team and, and do the things we, we love. Can you tell me about what is Matt Collig like? I mean, he, he just, it, it just, for a lot of fans, it seems like he just kind of came right out of nowhere and just started immediately getting successful. Maybe not immediately, but after a few years, got immediately successful. Can you tell me what it's like working with him? Well, you know, it is, it is immediate because in NASCAR, you don't do that, right? Like, you, you, you don't have the opportunity to just be very successful right off the rip, you know? So he um, it is immediate because when you look at it as in, like, um, it's a short period of time in NASCAR. Fastest team to win in Cup Series. Um, probably we won two back-to-back uh, championships, driver championships in the Xfinity Series, regular season. So it is immediate. And, you know, that's just surrounding yourself with good people. He knows how to do that. He knows business. <clears throat> He's built a bunch of great uh, companies, and that, that has been huge. So those things – just feeds into NASCAR, right? He teaches me and trains me on the business side of it, and he is very aggressive on how he does his businesses, all his businesses. And you look on the side of the ten hauler, and it's a lot of his businesses on the side of that. But he uses those businesses in NASCAR because he knows it works. We have analytics that shows that it works, and things the way we do it works. And uh, he's successful in about everything he does. I, I don't know anything that I've dealt with him that he's not successful in, you know, not making a Daytona 500 with the 13 car is probably something that we'll look back on and, and understand. But we came down here with three Xfinity cars a couple years ago, AJ Allmendinger and Ross Chastain missed the race due to some, some failures, parts failures, just like what we had with the 13. So those things is what makes us stronger. He knows how to use that and make us better. And uh, that's what's so unique about Matt Collig. He is just a, a great person and, and a great man to where we're best friends. We talk every day. We, we learn from our mistakes, and we move on. Now, let's talk about you for just a quick second. I, every time I watch a race with Colleg Racing in it, you can step right over the wire, man. Jeez. Appreciate you. I'm going to stop <laughs> using this trailer. <laughs> it's all good. Working environment. Yeah. But, but let's talk about you for a second. So last night I was listening to the radio communications. It's like listening to a comedy show. Yeah. You, you have some of the best sound bites in NASCAR. What exactly is it that makes you just so cheerful about just doing your job? Yeah, well, you don't – I think NASCAR gets a bad rap a lot, right? We don't get to hear NFL players on the sideline. I was watching something last night when I got back, and, you know, they were showing the Super Bowl, and they were showing Mahomes and, and all the guys and girls from, uh, you know, the, the Eagles and the Chiefs. And, I mean, it's the biggest game of the year. And those guys are having fun on the sideline. You don't get to see that. In NASCAR, we're all serious. Everybody's always serious, and we get beat up. I've gotten beat up on social media so much about, you know, we make mistakes. How can you still have fun? Well, I mean, what do you want to do? You want to be miserable all the time? So you try to have as much fun as you can. Now, do you have to work on your problems, issues? Absolutely. So, you know, Chandler Smith, we didn't get to make a lap in qualifying. 
you know, first time he's ever drove one of those cars. So, like, the odds of making the race was going to be pretty tough. You know, sped on pit road at the end of pit road, and it's like, why beat him up in the moment? Why do that? Why not have a little fun with it, figure out what he might be doing bad or good so he could actually put it into the Xfinity series? And, and you know, you do that on a radio, and the whole team and everybody, the atmosphere is way different, and they'll work really hard for you. But it's super hard in competition to think about that. You just think about the bad moments. You know, we'll win a race, and I'm immediately thinking about how we're going to win the next one. You don't even live in a moment, right? Like, so – what I say on the radio, and I've always said this, and, and I don't mind it at all, I'm going to say to the public, I won't, it's nothing I'm going to say on the radio that I'm scared of because NASCAR does a good job of having an app that everybody can listen. Every family member can listen. Everybody can listen. So um, I don't even think about it. I think I'm, if, if it's you and I on the radio, I'm talking to you. I don't think about all the other people. And I go back and I look at all the Twitter stuff that's said, and it's cool because I stand behind it. If, if I say we, we suck as a group, I stand behind that because that's – it's facts. It's not like I'm making it up. So I do that a lot because of our group and our people, and I love for it to keep it light. You shouldn't keep it as um, serious as we do sometimes because I want the world and I want the – I want everybody to be NASCAR fans, right? Like, and, and to be a NASCAR fan, you need something funny. You need something to have fun with. And I, I if it's me, I love having fun with it. Now, let's talk about one some of your drivers. A.J. Allmendinger just seems to be one of those. He, he seems to be like a perfect fit for this team. He's the kind of guy that also gives great sound bites, but he's the guy that just seems to always have a smile on his face no matter what's going on. What's it like working with him? You guys seem to have like a great relationship. We do because we trust each other, bad or good. Yes, he does have some great sound bites, just a little different than mine. And, you know, those are the one things you look back on in his career back in, in cup racing. And it was, you know, hey, don't make yourself that miserable. Don't do things to make yourself so miserable. And the what I look at with AJ is, is you just have to be honest with him. And I think sometimes, like, people haven't been honest with him. And he has to be honest with himself. And, and he's worked on that very hard. I, I feel like the end of the year last year, we, we kind of all lost composure in the Xfinity Series and because we didn't have all the speed that we needed. But you look back on our season, we had a 6.6 .6 average finish, best in 18 years, you know. So we had a great year. We just didn't get the final goal, right, like making it to the final four, winning the championship. Uh, and it's that <laughs> – I always tell him this. The championship is not set up for college racing because we've never run good at Phoenix. It's set up for somebody else. If you look at it, it's time to move to something else to let somebody else win. You always look at it, it's the same people racing for the championship at Homestead. I'm at shoot, Listen, at Homestead, at Phoenix. So, we do have a great relationship because we're so honest with each other. We, we play golf together. We, uh, we do the things that we need to do to keep a family going. And then on the opposite end of that spectrum, there's Kyle Busch, who just joined the yeah. team for a few races. First off, have you gotten the chance to work with him at all? Uh, yes and no. Some things we went through last year we were working on. We worked a lot with Kyle and his team. And... Um, I've worked with Kyle and talked to Kyle probably more in the last month than I have. And, um, no, we brought him in just like we did A.J. Allmendinger to make us better because we know as college racing we got to keep getting better. We could sit here and feel like we're fast and we're good, but we know we need A.J. Allmendinger, Justin Haley, Kyle Busch, Austin Dillon. We need these guys to make us better. So that's why we brought him in. And Because when you get to the Dash of Cash races and the, the final eight races, seven races, eight races – Whoever sits in that car then, we need to have a good notebook that they can go fast. They can get in those cars and run fast because this car can win a championship. You look at Gibbs, they've done it for so many years, and it made them so good. We lose sight of that, right? Like, people have lost sight of that. If we can do it with the 10 car, and, and you know, we were going to do it anyway with the 14 car, but the circumstances with sponsors and different things, it just ended up being the 10 car. So Kyle's going to make us good, but he's also going to make us uh, – better right like and and we're probably gonna get embarrassed a little bit and we're probably gonna get our feelings hurt which we're okay with we just have to work through them and make ourselves better and Kyle knows that he knows it's yeah we might be going on eight years old old but it's still a, a work in progress and he's here to help in the past there's been so much synergy with these with these teams with these drivers they always just seem to have like this camaraderie so much so that it seems like they're willing to finish second behind whoever's in, behind their teammate who's in first, just for the sake of a colleague racing one-two. Right. 
do you, based off your interactions with him, do you think Kyle Busch could do something like that? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I think Kyle is. Uh, I think Kyle's a different person than everybody thinks he is. I think if if we give team orders, you know, and and we say, hey, this is what we got to do, absolutely, because. He would nothing rather to see a college racing car win or RCR car win because he knows he's part of it. Last night he's running or in the duels, he's running, you know, first, just chilling along there. All our other cars haven't run that great, and he gets wrecked, you know, and, and he gets out of the car. The old Kyle Busch would have not even made an interview, right? Like, he would have not even had an interview last night, had a great interview. I don't really know why he was pushing. It was no second line coming. I don't know if you watched that. And it was like, that's the new Kyle Busch. Right, that's the Kyle Bush that everybody's been knowing that's in there. So he wants to make the team better. He knows that puts the team behind because now they gotta bring a whole new car down or put a whole new car together or whatever they gotta do and it's he don't want that. So he don't understand it, but he didn't do anything to make a meme, right? Now you know, you look at all the memes where he went like this. He didn't do that. So I think that's the new Kyle Bush and I think that's because of how he's composing himself and how the things he's went through trying to get contracts done and different things have helped him so yeah i think team orders come down and says hey you know you got to run second or you got not really run second but you need to help your teammate i feel like kyle would do it and then let's go back to last night again <clears throat> aside from kyle bush let's talk about what happened from that or well actually i'm sorry the dual one chandler smith didn't make it you already mentioned it what did you say to Chandler exactly? You said, don't, don't beat him up in the moment. What did you say to him to kind of perk his spirits up and get ready for Saturday? Yeah, well, I told him before the race started that, you know, you can't go and think this night is defining your season or doing anything like that. This is just to learn and get better. We wanted you to make the Daytona 500. We took a chance with bringing a rookie down here that's never even shifted these cars. I mean, he's been in trucks. He's run three Xfinity races. We all took a chance. And... And I do, truly believe Chandler Smith is the next superstar. Um, so you just can't we, – we talk about it on Monday. We'll go, okay, how could you have been better? What did you do? Why did you speed on pit road? We as a group, Chevrolet, done a, a horrible job in, in strategy, and we didn't end up uh, – we wasn't going to make it anyway. But at the end of the day, what were the mistakes? What can you take from it? And you move on to the next one, right? Like, so you don't – you don't just live and die off of one lap or one race. You try to figure out what makes it better. But the main thing you always tell him, because he's, he's still a young man, you know, he's 20 years old. Um, you have to tell him that that is not a defining season. Today and tomorrow is what we're racing for. The Xfinity Championship, impressing everybody right here, and we'll take those races in the cup side and make those learning and trying to make you better. And another thing that came out of last year, Landon Castle was with the team. He's not full-time this year, and a lot of people say it's because of that sponsorship. Do you know exactly what happened with that? Oh, yeah, I know exactly what happened to it. <laughs> so, but, you know, Landon done us a great job. Landon was amazing. Landon's still a, 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 a friend and a colleague, and, and he's part of uh, – we would nothing else love to have Landon in the car right now, but, you know, this car, it has to have sponsorships just like everybody else's. I think sometimes people forget that. We have to have partners and we have to have people that, that will spend the money. And, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, you're going to run a fourth car. You can't run a car empty. You have to have partners. And hopefully down the road we can work with Landon again um, And because Landon did nothing wrong. He had, a good, he had a good year, didn't have a great year, had a good year. Team didn't have a great year. But, I mean, he had started hitting his own there at the end with, you know, some races there at the end, even finishing fourth at, uh, at Phoenix. So, you know, if, uh, if things work out well and Landon can get a, some sponsorship and different things, maybe Landon will be back in a colleague racing car. So it just it, – it is, it is a bad situation when, you, when anything, partners leave or, you know, whatever economics change and stuff like that because he did have a two-year deal. So – uh, no hard feelings with Landon. Love Landon to death, and, and Landon's been nothing but upstanding to us and our whole organization. On the other end of that, there's a number 10 car now, and we have Kyle Busch that's going to be in in a few races, but do you know exactly what other drivers that are being looked at for that car? Oh, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> can, can you really be, can you say any? <laughs> no, I can't say nothing yet because there's so much more to it than just telling the driver, right? Um, you know, we got Justin Haley in it, Austin Dillon's driving it. AJ Almendinger's driving it, Kyle Bush is driving it, and uh, it's probably going to be a couple more that's going to be fun to 
fun to look at. And, you know, the Xfinity Series, I know we always look at, we don't want these cup guys over here. But I think, you know, you're going to put more people in the seats. You're going to have more people watching on TV to see what Justin Haley does here at Daytona. The dude's won a ton of races. And, um, you know, I think next week, Austin Dillon back in the car. You know, he's always been great at California. Everybody's going to be watching to see what he does. And then definitely when Kyle Busch shows up out of retirement from the Xfinity Series at Vegas, I'm sure it's going to be a ton of people watching. So, you know, we got to we got to uphold and do what we know we can do and um, put the people in the grandstands, put the people on the TV so it makes a, a great event for the fans. Because really, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. We love our fans. I'm going out uh, this afternoon, going to give some flags away to the – uh, give some stuff away. I told people on Twitter, if you don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you should, that if you was flying a college racing flag, I'll bring you a shirt. So I know it's some, some in the infield and outfield that we're going to try to find and uh, give some stuff away. But we love our fans. We now have, at the racetrack, we have our own souvenir trailer. So that's cool in itself. And um, really excited about our 10 car, but super excited about the 16 with Chandler Smith. And you cannot forget Daniel Hemrick in the champion. I think that dude's worked harder than anybody in the sport to be better this year, and he showed it at the first test, and I'm super excited about that. When it comes to the Cup Series, AJ going full-time, and then you have Justin Haley full-time for a second season. What are your expectations for that team, if any at all? Oh, it's definitely expectations. Last year I expected, you know, we'd be 25th. We exceeded that by a bunch. I, I want to say Justin Haley was somewhere right around 18th, and um, AJ was somewhere right around 14th when he ran it. Um, I'm looking to up that. I want to up that. I want to be contention. We've upped our pit crew situation by a bunch. Um, and, you know, I want to be able to look back on this season and say we made progression. You know, I mean, you can't go win against a big three, you know, Hendrick, RCR, Penske, I mean, more than that, SHR. Those guys are good, right? Like, they've been in business a long time. We've been in the Cup Series now one year. Um, and I think sometimes that gets overshadowed because we do run good at places. Uh, but we're going to make a lot of mistakes. You know, we're still hiring people. We've doubled our staff. Um, you know, we doubled our staff, and last night doesn't even look like it, right? So... You're gonna have those issues, and if we can if we can continue progression, uh, that is what we want to do. We want to make sure that everybody understands that this is a building deal. You ain't gonna have them overnight, and we're gonna have good races, but we also gonna have bad races. And hopefully, we got them out of the way. But you just you gonna have them. So that's that's what we want to do. Justin Haley needs to keep getting better. The most underrated driver in NASCAR, and as as he keeps getting better, that's what matters. One last kind of serious one. When you came back here in 2018, when you first got here in 2018, and you had Ryan Truex in the car, did you ever expect the team to grow as much as it has and be as successful as it has? No, because when Ryan Truex got in the car, we didn't even have a top five. You know, if you think about that, we had two years, we didn't even have a top five. Had some top tens. I remember when Ryan got in the car, we would have lunches for top tens. You know, that was a big deal. And I did no, I didn't. And, you know, we set, Matt and I always set, what's a 10-year plan? What's a five-year plan? What, how are we going to be better? What are we going to do to be better? And when you look back on what Blake Cook and Ryan Truex did for us, that helped us be better. And I know, you know, we can say whatever we want to. Well, they should be still be in a car. The cars are better. It's not about that. It's like, you know, I mean, I don't crew chief no more, right? Like, it's, it's things that you look at that, okay, this particular moment, with those guys made us better but no I had no idea that we would be this big I mean we brought six cars to Daytona this year no it's a, I think we have 130 people here you know I mean just in employees so no and I look at it and think goodness gracious that's a bunch and then a fun one you got some Instagram followers out there what's your deadlift max my deadlift max was 305, I think. Uh, it's not bad. No, it's not bad. I failed on like 320, I believe, um, which I should have been like 315. And we talked about this earlier. I'm super, I'm super healthy because I was 340 pounds, and I knew I had to get healthy. And then when I lost weight, I, I really put a lot of effort into my physical fitness, and I, it's just fed through our race team. I, I, we have a lot of people in our race team that's lost a lot of weight, works out, and does things that makes them healthy, because you want them healthy. So I do that for other people and myself. I, it gives me gives me an hour or so out of the day just to get away from everything, and um, I've worked out on the road as much as I could. Today's my off day, thank goodness, but it's um, it's something I love doing, and one day everybody can follow my, my life and understand that, yeah, AJ gives me crap all the time about putting 
workout videos up. But what I do that for is so people can see that it doesn't matter your size, your age, you can scale, you can do things to make you healthy, to make you work out the way you need to work out. It, it, it is about myself, but also trying to make people understand that you can do it. I, I was at the gym yesterday and I was watching, um, and here in Port Orange, CrossFit let us go in there and there was a lady working out and, and I'm sure she's not happy to be in the gym. Like, she, you know, she's working herself down and working out, but I think about that. I remember that day where I, I couldn't do a jump rope. Um, so those things are why I do it. And, I, I, you know, I talk about smile a lot. And, and that was me. And then my communications team thought it was great to stick with it. And, you know, people don't like to smile. I mean, they think everything, the world's coming to an end, it's a bad day. And if you just take a moment to smile at yourself or smile at somebody, man, it just makes you so much more happier. And um, some days you don't want to smile, but you just have to because it, it's – you have to do the things for yourself, and that's why I do work out, and that's why I work myself out, and I, I motivate the people in the gym. I try to do that. We grew our 5.30 a.m. class from three people, and I think it's averaging about 15 to 16 people now at CrossFit, 5.30 a.m., and that's a lot of fun, and, and I take that because social media did it, right? The, the people on social media and loving what we do. So, yeah, keep following because it my Instagram is a lot more fun than my Twitter because I – my stories get kind of crazy sometimes, especially when my wife and I, Tammy, will be might be drinking or something, or you never know what might happen. So, but um, no, thanks for asking because it means a lot to me about my fitness, and you know that's that is key to my life. Now I went an extra belt loop today, so I was pretty excited. That's always exciting. Yeah, that's always exciting. How much weight have you lost? So I'm, I've lost over 100 pounds. Um, over 100 pounds. My body fat is, I mean, way down. You know, you didn't check your body fat when you was 340, but my physical fitness is uh, it's on the A plus side, and the way we, we we they dictate that is how fast your heart rate comes down after it gets high and then comes down. So I'm on the A plus side, which is good for heart diseases and all that stuff. And that's um, that's something I'm proud of. I've been doing a bunch of uh, studying on how the cancer stuff and stuff like that. Uh, fasting is one of the ways that I've been working here lately, trying to get my stem cells up and stuff like that. So I don't put all of that out there, but that is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm well over 100 pounds, and, and my body fat's way down. So one day, it took me 48 years to post a picture without my shirt on and even take my shirt off, and I did it not long ago, and um, I'm super excited. I got abs. I didn't know I had them. They were always <laughs> back there, but it was under some fat or something. Well, Chris, I appreciate you taking the time with me, and I wish you wish you luck this year. Well, thank you. This is Harrison Burton, driver of the number 21. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, check out one of these two videos beside me. Visit funstretch.com for more racing content.